Number 12, letter A. Calculate the force needed to bring a 950 kilogram car to rest from a speed of 90 kilometers per hour in a distance of 120 meters, a fairly typical distance for a non-panic stop. All right, so here uh, we have detailed letter A. All right, we have a car, 950 kilograms. Initial velocity told us was uh, 90 uh, kilometers per hour. And it travels 120 meters as it comes to then a rest after it travels those 120 meters. And we are to assume that the, accel the deceleration, right, it would be a negative acceleration uh, in this problem. And we are to assume that that is constant. I know it doesn't say that, but there's no other way to determine it is otherwise. And therefore, we will assume the simplest set of assumptions, uh, which would be that it is constant. So, all right, so now what we need to do here is uh, let's focus on the question. It says calculate the force needed. All right, so what should be what should be going on in your mind now is you're thinking about, well, what equations do I know uh, that talk about force? So I have velocity. I have to connect it to force somehow. I have a change in velocity. So that means that they're, oh, they're right. There is some acceleration, right? It's a negative acceleration here, but we would say that the acceleration would be some negative value. I don't know what it is, but... How does acceleration connect to force? And then you might have the aha moment of saying, oh, right, the sum of the forces is equal to ma. So if only I can find the acceleration, I can find the net force, right? Because we do know the mass as well. All right, so there it goes, right? So this is an x problem in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction will equal then the mass, right, 950, multiplied by this acceleration, which we need to find. So how do we find this acceleration? Well, this goes back to chapter three, right? I mean, you, you have some initial velocity value, you have some final velocity value, you have a distance that you've traveled. So you have to remember the equations that relate all those variables to acceleration, okay? And remember that that formula, I'll put it over here on the right-hand side, um, would be the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared uh, plus two times the acceleration multiplied by that displacement, right? And the, oh, this is all in the x direction. Cool. So the final velocity was zero. Initial was, well, here, right? You got to make sure, always check your units. All right, 90 kilometers per hour. Um, I'd, I'd prefer that in meters per second, especially once I'm calculating force. I need the acceleration in meters per second squared. Okay, so let's just do a quick conversion here. I'll do it at the top, 90 kilometers per hour. Always make sure, keep, check your units. All right, make sure that the units are appropriate. You guys know the standard units. All right, so we convert that to meters, hours on the top, seconds on the bottom, 3,600 seconds in an hour, great, blah, blah, blah. So it's just gonna be 90 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, 25, right? So this works out to be 25 meters per second. Okay, so that's gonna be the initial value I'm gonna use. So let's go back to our formula. So we plug in 25 squared plus two times that acceleration multiplied by the distance, which was uh, 120 meters. All right, great. So, right, let's just uh, start plugging in some numbers. Uh, I'll just, I'm gonna bring, uh, how do I wanna do this? I'll bring this value, right, 25 squared on over to that side. All right, I'm gonna calculate it right now just so we can put a, combine a couple of steps essentially. So this is six, negative 625. 2 times 120 is going to be 240. That's A. Divide both sides by 240. And here we're going to have our acceleration value. And like I said, it should come out to be negative, all right, which it does. So negative 2.60, all right, so negative 2.60. And remember, that is now in meters per second squared, which will be the units I need to use in order to plug that into my formula here, okay? So let me just go back. I'll erase this. I'll do it all in one step. Change the color. And we'll plug in now the value of negative 2.60, all right? And that's in meters per second. So the sum of the forces here in the x direction, which we should expect also to be negative if the car is slowing down, or if the motion of the object is to the right, to slow it down, we have to apply some net external force pointing in the opposite direction, all right? So 950 times 2.6. I know it's negative. I just didn't say it. So it's going to be uh, 2.47. Yeah, I'll just eh, forget about the scientific notation, right? 2,470, almost looks like a Z, at the seven looks like a Z, 270, and that is in Newtons, all right? And don't forget to plug in that negative sign. Okay, so that's part A. So let's move on to letter B. 
Suppose instead the car hits a concrete abutment at full speed and is brought to a stop in two meters. Calculate the force exerted on the car and compare it with the force found in part A. All right, so uh, here's our picture now, right, of part B. It only takes now, or I should say that the velocity of the vehicle changes from 90 kilometers per hour to zero kilometers per hour in only a distance of two meters. All right, so the we should expect the acceleration to be significantly higher, right, in terms of negative acceleration, right? Now, I already calculated the meter per second value here, so it's going to be the same. So this is just 25 meters per second. All right. So now what we need to do is we're going to need to calculate now essentially the new acceleration. All right. So this part of the problem is virtually the same. Some of the forces in the x direction will equal to max. Now what I need to find, I know the mass of the object is 950 kilograms. So I need to find that acceleration. So I literally do the same process here. All right. So the final velocity is zero. The initial is again 25 right squared plus two times the acceleration now multiplied by only two. Okay, so it's going to work out to negative 625 right after we do the math. It's literally the same as the top. The only difference is now it's 4a instead of 240a. So simply divide out the four on both sides and we'll find that the acceleration here uh, will be 625 over four. So this works out to be about yeah, 156. So 150, oops, 156 meters per second squared. Remember that it is negative. Okay, so now uh, let's plug in that value. So the value here is going to be negative uh, 156, right, meters per second squared. And now just throw that into the calculator. So 950 times negative 156. So it's going to be negative 1.48 times 10 raised to the, what do we got there? It looks like five, right? And that's five and that's Newton's, all right? So that would be the final answer uh, for part B. I mean, and then it says compare it. So you can just compare it, you know, uh, like a percentage wise, if you like, you know, just take uh, this value and divide it by this value, okay? To find, you know, um, how, you know, what, a, what basically percent the force of part A is of part B. So if you were to do that, right, it'd be uh, 2,470 divided by 1.48 times 10 to the 5. And we it would work out to be about 0.017, right, which would be about 1.7%. All right. So I know I didn't write it down, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. 1.7%. All right. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Hit that like button. That would be awesome. And I uh, would appreciate it so much. That would be great. Look forward to helping you in the next question. Take it easy.